Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Here's my very beautiful but highly dangerous uh, uh, North African sawscale vipers, also known as Echis oscillatus. They're brothers. Unfortunately, you know, I didn't get any any females from the lit, small litter that I had. Um, you can see that he's a male because of the the robustness of his. Uh, his back end there. See from right here it's fat and females would the tail would abruptly taper down to a really thin uh, structure. Now the reason why it's fat is that's because he keeps his junk in there. Um, these guys even though I've you know raised them up are are very very shy. Uh, he's heading for the log because we of course uh, uh, came in and uh, oh, he's not heading oh, for the log. Maybe heading out to see if there's something to eat. Yes. Well, he does probably smell the rats that we have or the mice. Well, hello. Yes, I have I have food, but it's large mice and by the look of your scales, you don't need large mice. Okay, so just don't bite one another because there's mouse scent in the air and everybody's moving to cover. And you can see he's a male. You can look at that tail. It just almost goes straight back. So that was the Echis oscillatus. And, you know, I put them in the cage so we could see and visit with them because they used to live in the tub to, uh, side by side. I figured they were brothers and wouldn't reproduce. and we could put them in the cage together and we could enjoy seeing them because they're really beautiful saw scales but they no, hidden all the time. they're very very shy even with you know Lori and I and you know they know I bring treats but uh, um, they're just you know very shy even with me however our friend the Egyptian saw scale knows I bring treats and I'm in here with treats and uh, uh, this, uh, I don't know if this is the male or the female, but earlier it came rushing out to the front because it saw me for the first time uh, today on, this is a Saturday, which normally every everybody gets fed, oh. and, uh, you know, came all the way over here and was begging and running up against the glass, and then, of course, ended that with a strike. Right now it just ended it with a strike uh, because uh, it doesn't want to says I'm not going across the glass to, just to please you again and make you feel like you're starving me but they'll get fed a little later when I have the right size food items for it. Well, here we have the Bittus cordalis or horned adder from South Africa. Um, these are very very variable in what they look like uh, um, you can Google it and you can see that they, they make, depending on the region they're from in South Africa, the location, um, they will, uh, they will have different colors and patterns and stuff. Well, you missed. There you go. And it's the minimum amount of shake and bake on there. <laughs> Uh, the venom of the horn adder is basically cytotoxic and hematoxic. Uh, certainly, uh, it would be a very bad experience uh, to get bit by one, but likely not life-threatening with uh, supportive medical care. Uh, you might lose a chunk of, of 
finger or whatever got bit. Um, uh, but the the venom, uh, you know, the coagulopathy would have to be treated, uh, you know, perhaps by blood products or or something like that. Um, uh, but it's just the sort of thing that um, the physicians just sort of have to rough through it because there is no specific antivenin. I know, you know, the South African polyvalent has been uh, tried many times and uh, I don't think there's any true studies that I can reference where they were used in a clinical setting and um, I don't even know of uh, a in vitro or laboratory study where they used South African polyvalent in an assay where uh, it's mixed with venom and uh, uh, they can determine, you know, the neutralizing capability of the antivenin in this way. This is done all the time with you know, uh, with lots of snakes, uh, I see it being done. Uh, a matter of fact, when I first imported uh, uh, Bittis parviacula into the country in the uh, mid 2000s, um, I worked with uh, my friend Doug Hodel and Dr. Elda Sanchez at the Natural Toxins Resource Center. I extracted venom from one of the one or two of the Bittis parviacula, actually. Probably only one because the the venom yield was quite high, and they only needed a small amount. But they actually did assays comparing uh, the South African polyvalent uh, uh, against uh, the venom of puff adder and parviacula, and found that in South African polyvalent would be um, polyspecific for uh, uh, for parviacula. So if a zookeeper or a private individual got bit by a parviocula, and I know of at least one of one person that got bit uh, by a parviocula. Um, they use South African polyvalent, and it worked quite effectively. Um, so these assays can be done. Uh, it's just that mm, bites by horned adders really don't amount to very many, and it's usually private keepers that you know mess up like you know we're all sort of human and you know you can mess up legitimately and and get bit or you can be a dumbass and you know try to free handle stuff uh, and then if you get bit uh, you know okay it's on you not don't blame the animal uh, the animal was just being the animal and you know one of my favorite long time sayings is you can take the animal out of the jungle, but you can't take the jungle out of the animal. That's very true. So they will always have some wild characteristics, uh, um, you know, and especially snakes, you know, which haven't been kept in captivity for hundreds of years, uh, like other quote unquote domesticated animals. But look how many people are mauled and bitten and killed even by dogs who have been domesticated for, you know, hundreds and maybe thousands of years. So uh, there's always a wild part still in there waiting to get triggered and, you know, and that's the way you have to work with these animals. And, uh, um, you know, the bison in the national parks are racking up the dumbasses left, right, and sideways. Um, they have to get a selfie with a bison and they pay the price. Sometimes it's serious price. Uh, certainly not worth it to me. Uh, I just, you know, will stand back and appreciate the animal for, for what it is and uh, not risk my life for something stupid like a selfie. It was certainly nice of her to turn to the camera like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. She's quite co cooperative. Uh, the little boy is sort of right under the lip, right near the door, so we're not going to get much video of him, I think. <laughs> uh, uh, he just shed, so he will, uh, uh, he will maybe be hungry because he hasn't been fed in a while. And actually, you know, he's more dog-like. Uh, um, if he's in the back of the cage on the hot spot, uh, 
and I tap on the, the front rim of the, the cage and he smells food, he'll actually inch forward or sometimes sleep forward. Uh, um, so he's usually uh, uh, pretty good at feeding, and, but last week he didn't, and I must have missed his shed cycle. Um, I didn't catch him when he was uh, opaque. But he didn't eat, and I was like, well, okay, no problem. He's got great weight. He can go without a week. Although I do have snakes here that, you know, I'm a bit worried about. Uh, uh, the green rocket and the big blue girl uh, haven't eaten since November. Uh, I haven't bred them this year, um, but that doesn't stop the green rocket. Um, we're going to do a video uh, um, showing uh, some comparisons between her babies and, and babies by Big Blue, which were uh, f eggs were fertilized in the natural way rather than mm, the green rocket just uh, basically cloning herself. So let's uh, move along since she's uh, done. We gotta give her some water uh, and we'll go visit the male now and see what he's up to. Normally he's like, he has his uh, head up on the glass. I'm sure he knows something's up because, you know, the substrate in the glass um, certainly makes uh, uh, quite a, a racket and vibration and stuff. Okay, we're approaching. Oh, did it? That didn't take long. Okay, so he's a strike and releaser. I told you it wouldn't be much of a video for him because we have other things to do. We're not gonna hang out and watch him eat. Fortunately, the, the female decided that she was gonna put on a, a very nice little uh, show for us. Uh, the male we'll just leave alone um, and we'll catch up with later and make sure that he ate. Bye-bye, sweetie.